Good morning, hello. In my last class, I have explained about types of electron transition chain. Electron transition chain using this wood spectroscopy. In this topic, I am going to explain basic technology that has been used in using this wood spectroscopy. These are very, very important for deeper point of view also. Basically, in this class, I am going to explain the six terms. Those are chromophore, isochrome, bathochromic shape, exochromic shape, hyperchromic shape, and hypochromic shape. Let's see one by one. First one, chromophore. Chromophore, it is a part or group of a molecule. It is responsible for characteristic absorption of substances at particular wavelength. Means, it is a part or group of a molecule. Okay, chromophore is a part or group of the molecule. It is responsible for the characteristic absorption. This is important. Responsible for the characteristic absorption of substances. Means, if any substance absorbing due to this code relation means, that person, that consists of chromophore. Without chromophore, the molecule cannot absorb due to this code relation. That is the important thing. Okay, and particular level. Okay, here it is covalently unsaturated. It is covalently unsaturated. Unsaturated means double bonds or triple bonds. You can see example I have written on the chromophore ethylene. Okay, here one double bond is there. Ethylene, one triple bond is there. And uh, aldehyde, one double bond is there. Nitrite and the C triple bond, and it is there. Nitrogen dioxide. Here I think in this all these examples, double bonds or triple bonds are there. Means these are chromophore. With this indicating, I am indicating here it consists double bonds and as well as uh, both the other electrons will be there. So, it indicating that the molecule uh, forcing double bond or triple bond are lone pair of electrons that acts as a chromophore, means that can absorb due to this good radiation and that can use spectrum due to this good spectroscope. Then, coming to second term, oxochrome. Oxochrome. It is a coordinate saturated or unsaturated. Coordinate saturated or unsaturated. They do not have characteristic absorption on their own. They do not have characteristic absorption on their own. But when attached to the chromophore, it can modify the absorption maximum, means lambda max. It can modify the absorption maximum of chromophore. It can modify the absorption maximum of chromophore towards lambda wavelength along with increasing intensity of absorption. Means, okay, here oxygen is a pore that is saturated and unsaturated. Okay, they do not have characteristic absorption, means they do not possess any absorbing property like chromophore. Chromophore has an absorbing property. Here, they don't possess any absorbing property. But, it has specific property. But, but, when attached to the chromophore, when it, uh, this absorbing attached to the chromophore, it absorption maximum, lambda max towards lambda wavelength. Means, it can increase the lambda max of chromophore towards it can increase the lambda max towards the air level and as well as increasing the intensity of absorption also like that. Okay? Here, uh, for, the, uh, for that, I will give some examples under oxygen. Those are OH, NH2, NHR, NRP, and minus uh, and uh, sulfur hydrogen. All these are examples under oxygen. And I will, uh, I will explain how oxygen can increase the lambda max of chromophore. Let's see. Here, this is the benzene. Benzene is the chromophore. Why it is chromophore? It is put in double bonds. Okay, that's why it is chromophore. And here to this benzene, we are adding amine NH2. This is oxochrome. I already told you that NH2 is the oxochrome. Oxochrome doesn't possess any absorption, but this chromophore has the absorption properties. Chromophore actually in lambda max is 255 nanometer. 255 nanometer. Okay, that is benzene in lambda max is 255 nanometer. Chromophore. But suppose if we add absorption that is NH2. Here, this molecule will be formed. Okay, this molecule will be formed. And lambda max is 280. And lambda max is 280 nanometer. You can see here. Here, lambda max, uh, we are from, uh, we started having 255. After adding oxygen, you can see it is increased to 280. 280 means 25 nanometer has been increased. That is known as, uh, that, that is the addition of oxygen. If you add any oxygen to the chromophore, the lambda max will be increased. That is the concept of oxygen. Then, Spec spectral, then spectral shift, then spectral shift, so that bad, uh, next one, bathochromic shift, bathochromic shift, okay, here, shifting of lambda max towards higher wavelength is known as bathochromic shift, okay, bathochromic shift is nothing but shifting of lambda max towards higher wavelength, okay, towards is the higher wavelength is known as bathochromic shift, here, in this, on the bathochrome, I explain 
one thing. This should be come lambda max towards higher order than this can also be considered as an example for path of logic shift. Okay, lambda max will be in this towards higher order. Okay, here this path of logic shift is also known as, you keep in mind, path of logic shift is also known as red shift. Path of logic shift is also known as red shift. Okay, here why uh, lambda max will be increased? Okay, why uh, how path of logic shift will be occurred? You can see it is occurring due to addition of chromophore. If you add any uh, chromophore to the molecule or addition of oxychrome, if you add any oxychrome to the molecule or by changing the polarity of solvent or by increasing the conjugation, increasing the conjugation or addition of double bonds or triple bonds. Okay, okay, by addition of double bonds or triple bonds leads to the increase the shifting of lambda plus towards higher value. Lambda plus will be increased by due to all this reason. Addition of chromophore or addition of oxychrome or by changing the polarity of solvent or by increasing the conjugation. Conjugation is nothing but the other type of carbon atoms are in double bonds. Okay, if you double bond increasing also leads to lambda max will be increased. Okay, and as well as addition of double bonds or triple bonds. Then, for example, uh, I, will, I can explain uh, how lambda max will be increased by the addition of double bonds or triple bonds are increased in the conjugation. You can see here this is the C2H4, this is ethylene, which is having one double bond. One double bond means it can give lambda max, it can uh, index by new divisible spectra. The lambda max of this compound is 170 nanometer. What is 170 nanometer? Then if you can take second compound, 13 butyl diene. 13 butyl diene produces four carbons, first carbon having double bond and third carbon having double bond. So 13 butyl diene it produces 270 nanometer. Means it giving lambda max at 270 nanometer. You can see. Here it is, it is having only one double bond so that it is having it is producing uh, lambda max at 170 nanometer. But it is producing how many double bonds? One and two. We are due to increasing of one double bond as compared to this one, lambda max has been increased. You can see here. So this is a 270 nanometer. So here uh, as compared to this one, lambda max is high because of addition of double bond, because of because of having double bond. Okay, this is bathochromic shape. Then Hypsochromic shift, okay. Hypsochromic shift, shifting of lambda max towards lower wavelength. Shifting of lambda max towards lower wavelength is known as hypsochromic shift. It is quite opposite to the bathochromic shift. Bathochromic shift is nothing but uh, shifting of lambda max towards higher wavelength. Right? It is lower wavelength. Why it is occurring? Why hypsochromic shift should be occurring? It is quite opposite to bathochromic shift. Or suppose remo removal of, or suppose. Uh, removal of oxychromes, removal of chromophore, removal of double bonds or triple bonds, okay, and by changing the polarity of solvent. All these reasons will, uh, will cause to the hypsochromic shift. Removal of oxychromes and removal of chromophore. Next, if any molecule, from any molecule, we will remove removal of oxychrome part or chromophore part, or we are remove, uh, removing any double bond from that molecule, the lambda max will be increased. Uh, sorry, the lambda max will be decreased. Or by changing the polarity of solvent. I told you that how polar cap solvent will be attacked in my last class that is the types of electronic transition. Okay, once you go through that. By changing the polar cap solvent. Here uh, this hypsochromic shift is also known as blue shift. Hypsochromic shift also known as blue shift. It is also known as red shift. Rather than blue shift, red shift. Why it is blue shift and red shift? We know that here we have seven colors. In, uh, okay, there's here. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Here, uh, okay, as the color, it indicates it is having lower wavelength, it is having high wavelength. It is having high wavelength. Okay? Wavelength. It is having low wavelength. Okay? Here, violet and indigo color, we cannot see. We cannot visible to us. Okay? We can only see from blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Here, blue and uh, blue having wavelength low as compared to red. Here, red is having high wavelength, right? Here in the path of chromic shift, what is happening? Lambda max is increasing towards higher wavelength. That's why it is known as red shift. Okay, red color having higher wavelength. Then uh, hypsochromic shift is uh, towards lower wavelength. Here blue color having blue color having low wavelength as compared to red. So that's why it is known as blue shift. Okay, blue shift is means it is uh, towards lesser wavelength. It is in the wavelength from the lambda max. Okay. This is uh, hypsochromic shift. Next, I will explain about hyperchromic shift and hypochromic shift. The name is simply indicated hyper means increasing towards high. Okay, shifting of molar extinction coefficient, shifting 
of polar exchange and exchange coefficient towards higher values are indicating the absorption towards higher values is known as hyperthermic shift okay in this molar exchange coefficient it is given by epsilon max it is also known as molar absorption coefficient okay in a shifting of molar exchange coefficient towards higher values our intensity of absorption will be increased our intensity of absorption towards higher values this is known as hyperthermic shift okay here you can see the example here i given here fluid error is at molar exchange coefficient that is 2750 okay of flooding uh, metal group alkyl this is okay Al of flooding metal group okay metal group you can see it is forming okay it is forming here epsilon max the molar exchange coefficient is 3560 so error is at 2550 of flooding here 3560 molar exchange coefficient value is increasing or molar exchange coefficient values are moving towards higher values this is known as hypertrophic shift or increasing the intensity of absorption that is also known as hypertrophic shift then the last thing is hypotrophic shift hypo nothing but low okay here shifting of molar exchange coefficient shifting of molar exchange co coefficient towards lower values or increasing the intensity of absorption Sorry, decreasing the decreasing the intensity of absorption, decreasing the intensity of absorption is known as hypotrophic shift. Okay, shifting of molar exchange coefficient towards lower values. Here, this time what will happen? Molar exchange coefficient values are moving towards lower values. Our intensity of absorption is moving to lower values. Our decreasing intensity of absorption. This is known as hypotrophic shift. This is quite opposite to hypertrophic shift. Okay, in this the uh, spectral shift, uh, we have discussed about basophonic shift. Hypertrophic shift and hypertrophic shift and hypertrophic shift. Overall, I want to tell you that hypertrophic and hypo hypertrophic these two are related to the absorption. Our molar exchange coefficient and molar absorption coefficient. Here, the basophonic shift or hypertrophic shift these two are related to the wavelength. That you have to keep in mind. Wavelength. These two related to the wavelength. These two related to the absorption. So here, these four terms I can make. I can okay. I can explain by crossing the graph. This is okay. On x-axis, I have taken wavelength. On y-axis, I have taken epsilon max. And you can also take an uh, absorption. Okay, wavelength versus absorption and wavelength versus epsilon max. Molar exchange coefficient. Here, generally we will take a peak. Okay, this is a peak. For suppose we assume that we we can't take like this. Okay, here for suppose this peak is on the lambda axis two fifty nanometer in tensile. Okay, this uh, lambda axis of this peak is 250 nanometer. Okay, then uh, then if the if the wavelength is increasing, means if the shifting of wavelength, lambda axis towards higher wavelength towards the right side, that is known as red shift. That is bathotropic shift. Means for suppose I tell you that wavelength one is 250 nanometer, right? Okay, after any lambda probe or after any double probe or double probe or double probe, what will happen? This wavelength is moving towards right side. Means it is after and here. Distance the peak is after and here. Here it is maybe after and two eighty nanometer. From two fifty to two eighty, it is moving towards higher values. So that is known as bathotropic shift or red shift. If the wavelength is, for suppose I told you that it is after it is after and two fifty nanometer. If the wavelength is moving towards left side, means we have uh, okay, we have from two fifty to for suppose two 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 thirty. It is after two thirty. Okay, it is known as isotropic shift. Means if y is after, I have to explain. So the more of our Are double ones are double ones, are double ones, double ones are double ones. Okay, these two red shift and blue shift, these two are related to the wavelength. And uh, hypertrophic shift here actually you consider the you consider the okay here peak is having absorption fine four. You consider this peak is having absorption fine four. Okay, here it is moving upside means okay intensity of absorption is increasing. But suppose intensity of absorption we are planning anything, we are planning a certain amount of power. It is after that point A. This peak intensity. Okay, the peak it is like this. Okay, peak the peak height is increasing. Peak height is increasing nothing but intensity of absorption also will be increasing. This time we will take absorption maybe point A or one like that. Means the intensity of absorption is increasing. That is known as hypertrophic shift. You okay? Next one hypertrophic shift. The intensity of absorption is decreasing. This time actual peak height. Original peak height is like this. It is at point four. You can see that. If okay, after removing any absorbers and double bonds, what will happen? After removing any double bonds, what will happen? The absorption will be decreased. Means you can see here it is actually fine. But after removing any, after any fine two or fine three, from 
I want to find out that that is a degree thing. That is hypochromic shift. Okay, hypochromic shift. So these two hypochromic and hypochromic shift are related to the absorption. Red shift and blue shift. These two are related to the wavelength. This is the overall uh, working uh, overall concept of basic terminology. These are very very important in point of the GPA and as well as the inside purpose.